Elk Grove Unified students, families, and staff. I'm Santi Pinkerton. And I'm Sandeep Dosanjh, and welcome to another episode of EGU News. So the headlines for today's episode are what distance learning looks like from a teacher, um, healthy habits during distance learning, many resources and announcements, and then we've got a couple of great shout outs today, Sandeep, um, yeah. with some very, yeah, very generous local groups and businesses who are helping our workers and our employees stay healthy and stay safe. Sandeep? Okay. EGUSD distance learning starts tomorrow for secondary schools and wow. in five days for elementary schools. Wow, that's awesome. So today we want to emphasize tip number five, which is follow healthy habits. And we also want to revisit tip number four, because we found some great resources. Um, this is for our distance learning. Uh, and the five tips short online video is available to for everybody to go back and, and review it's in the letter. Um, and then don't forget, you're welcome, of course, to go back to the other letters we've already sent. Um, the, we, the one on April 9th focused on tips one and two. The one on April 13th focused on tips number, or tip number three. And then the one we just sent yesterday was a focus on tip number four. So if parents wanna have a review of that, they can always go back to those letters on our website. Okay, so on tip four, we wanted to give parents a few more resources on preparing for distance learning. Please make sure you take a look at these added resources. Yes, um, there's a video and a downloadable document on how to access the class link portal. So there's a variety, a couple of things there. And you know, that class link portal is gonna be a huge platform that everyone needs to get familiar with. And let's go ahead and run this video for our viewers where Mrs. Trujillo, an EGUSD teacher, demonstrates distance learning for her seventh grade class. Hey students, Mrs. Trujillo here to give you an overview of what distance learning will look like in English 7 Honors. The slides presentation that I'm using is available to you on Google Classroom underneath distance learning resources. So what I'd like you to do very quickly is go ahead and pause the video and read over the distance learning norms that you see on your screen. The first thing that we'll be going over are the um, use of the different online platforms that we'll be using in English 7 Honors. So I'm gonna show you how to access the document that I'm going to be highlighting or going over. Um, to get to the document that we're about to go over, you're gonna go to Google Classroom. You're gonna click on Classwork up here at the top and then you'll see that Google Classroom is separated by topics. Distance learning resources is what we're gonna be looking at, and you'll see a copy of the Google Slides presentation that I'm using, so you have that available to you. Um, and then the document that I'm gonna be using um, in just a moment is the online platform syllabus. So if you wanna go ahead and pause the video and open it up on your own, you're welcome to do that. Otherwise, I'm gonna have a copy of the document open on my screen so you can just follow along with me here. So what this document is, um, is a, a, it's a table that outlines the different online platforms that we're going to be using in English 7 Honors along with how they're going to be used in English. So I just wanted to make sure that I was very transparent about the different online platforms that you'll be accessing um, and you know how they're going to be used in English. So the first thing that I'd like to point out are my office hours. So office hours are going to be held on Mondays and Wednesdays via Zoom from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. So Zoom meeting links and passwords will be posted on Google Classroom. And if you have a question about any of the assignments outlined in your weeks at a glance, please submit that question using this Google form so I can address it during my office hours. So there's a direct link here that you click on and um, enter a question that you would like addressed during my office hours. So I'll be showing you in a separate video how to use your weeks at a glance. So there will be a separate video showing you what your weeks at a glance is and then how to use it. And again, Zoom meeting office hour links will be um, posted on Google Classroom. So if you'll look here on Google Classroom, you'll see that there's a topic that says office hours link and password. And then you'll see the date for the office hours along with the link and the password you use to access that. 
All right. So the first online platform that I'm going to review with you is Synergy. So Synergy will be used for, um, you know, roughly the same reasons that we use uh, Synergy, you know, when we aren't doing distance learning, and that is to send me messages um, as well as receive messages from me. Um, also, Synergy will be used for posting assignment grades. The next online platform that um, I'm going to go over is Google Classroom. So here's how Google Classroom is going to work um, with regards to distance learning. So Google Classroom, um, I, the first thing I want to make sure I highlight is that I will be posting a week at a glance Google Doc each Friday on Google Classroom that outlines the lessons, all the lessons and activities that will be due the following week. So the week at a glance doc will contain all assignment instructions um, or steps for completion, all due dates and or links to instructional videos explaining how to complete an activity. So that's just a brief overview of what the week at a glance is. Again, I'll be posting a separate video that um, gives you a detailed overview of what the weeks at a glance is and how to use it. The next online platform that I'd like to review with you that we'll be using, using in English is StudySync. So this one's really important because all of the assignments that you will be completing, um, as well as assessments, will be completed through StudySync um, and turned in through StudySync. So you won't be turning anything in through Google Classroom. You'll be using StudySync to turn everything in. If you forgot how to get to StudySync, I've put a link here to a video showing you how to get to StudySync through your EGUSD portal. The next online platform that we'll be using, using in English is Zoom. Zoom will be used for office hours and it is accessible through your EGUSD portal. Um, again, office hours are Mondays and Wednesdays from 10 a.m. to 11. And then again, links to Zoom meetings along with the password will be posted on Google Classroom. It says the night before office hours. Sometimes I might post them um, you know, a couple days before. Just make sure you're paying attention to the date um, that is posted along with the link and password. So if you want to take a moment to pause the video and read over what office hours will be used for, you may do that. And, okay. All right. So we'll be going over again more um, office hour stuff during our first office hours session. Um, but right now what I'm going to go over is class classwork, due dates, and grades. So assignment due dates. Um, very important work. All work will be due on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. So your weeks at a glance posted on Google Classroom will indicate which assignments are due on which days. Early submissions are welcome and late work will be scored down. So if it's one day late, the most you can hope to earn is half credit. Two or more days late, I won't accept the assignment. It will be a zero. And then finally, how to contact me. So right now, the best way to contact me is through Synergy email or directly through my um, EGUSD email address. Um, if you have a question that you need answered right away, that's the best way to contact me. If you have a question that you um, have about, if you have a question about an assignment, I'd prefer that you wait until office hours to get that question addressed just in case other students have the same question. I'd like them to benefit from hearing that answer. And then any questions, uh, those questions can be submitted through the English 7 Honors tutoring questions form, which again is accessible through this link here on the use of online platforms um, handout. Any other questions that you have, please feel free to email me. Thank you. Wow, that was an excellent overview. I'm just, that's amazing. Yeah, you know, it's great that some of the resources that our teachers come up with to really explain it to their students as well as to the rest of the district. So tip five, for following healthy habits, we have many resources available that you can go to. Yeah, so um, the first tip that comes in for tip number five, or the first point, is that um, it's really important for students to take screen breaks. It's important for even adults to take screen breaks. Um, and you have, there's a great article that you, people can learn from uh, that, are, that is posted on our digital citizenship resource page um, called hashtag remote learning and again it's one of those things that's in the letter it's linked there yeah and Zanthi I'm sure you're aware that Elk Grove Unified has received uh, numerous awards from digital citizenship um, the organization of our resources we do offer our students and families regarding the need for screen time breaks as well as other 
topics related to the internet and anything digital related. So take nutritional and physical activity breaks as well and review our healthy habits resources. Yes, and again, it's not just for students. This is for the adults too. We need these, I need this. I definitely need to go take my walk today. So the other one that we pointed to as well in the letter is practice mindfulness um, and use our family and community resources for social emotional learning. And there's also a great little graphic I found on there. It's um, for the 10 behaviors um, at home strategies that parents can use today. Another thing that I can even practice is extending grace and take some time out to hear answers and tips about distance learning. True, very true. So in the video, these other videos, the links that we have in the letter, um, there's one uh, when it comes to, you know, that, that idea of it, about extending grace. Um, that talks about the top seven school at home questions. Um, the answers are to common questions asked by parents who are teaching their children at home for the first time. And the questions include things like, well, what if I'm not qualified um, to homeschool or to do even distance learning, right? What should I prioritize? A lot of parents have asked us about that. What about a schedule? Um, and then what if I ruined my child's education? So good questions and that's a video it's about 17 minutes long so take a minute to to watch that one so this interview centers on what first time at home teachers should know top tips for parents teaching their children at home for the first time and some of the tips include you are not recreating school in your home use board games as learning tools and cut yourself some slack. You are new to this. That's right. So those are two great interviews that were conducted um, by our own, our other communication colleague, Mr. Tim Herrera. And so if you have a chance to take a little bit of time out of your day, watch both videos. They're both helpful and they both give some, some great you know, tips and ideas on what this new environment of distance learning is, is going to be like. So all great interviews. Now, Sunday, yes. I heard something awesome today. And um, it's something that you want to make sure that we share with our viewers. And that has to do with an interview you had, I guess. Yes, yes definitely. Zanthi, as you're aware, educational equity is one of our areas of focus here at Elk Grove Unified, both in and out of the classroom, including distance learning. I had the chance to speak with Matthew Espinoza more about what educational equity means and its continued importance during distance learning. That's awesome. Let's listen. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us. And during this Q&A session, we have Matthew Espinoza, Program Specialist from Elk Grove Unified's Department of Educational Equity. Really glad to be here. I've been a big fan of our Ego News and following along, it's really fun. So let's get right to it. So what exactly does educational equity mean? Yeah, yeah, I'm really proud to represent our Office of Educational Equity, um, and we get out that asked all the time. A lot of times it's actually confused with equality, and so equality are the things that we want for everybody, everyone to have the same. Um, equity recognizes that in order for people to have access to those, you know, rights and those, those goals that we, that we desire for everyone, that they might need something different. And each individual comes from different backgrounds, you know, whether it's their race and their culture, their, their gender identities, their socioeconomic status, and all of those things kind of lead to um, uh, the, the need for different approaches as, as it relates to learning and achievement. And so we have these core values about addressing the needs, um, that, uh, leveraging the assets, the strengths, the talents of each individual to support learning, and then affirming their identities and validating who they are. And so our Office of Educational Equity really focuses on coordinating and supporting folks to accomplish those three goals. Okay, so what does educational equity mean now that we're all in distance learning? 
Yeah, so fundamentally, it means that we recognize that uh, everyone is being impacted during this time of distance learning. I mean, everyone is from, from mild, you know, uh, uh, annoyances to like major upending of people's lives. And so equity for us is talking about um, a recognition of that there might be some groups of students and families that are disparately impacted, meaning they're impacted like way more than others. And so um, we're thinking through the wide range of what those groups might be. For example, we know that, that one of those groups are students that might not have access to computers and Wi-Fi. And we've been talking about how we make sure that that happens and handing out lots of Chromebooks over the last the last couple of weeks. We've been thinking about like students needing support services. So our support services and wellness providers have been reaching out directly to all those students that regularly meet in order to make sure that they know how to access that. Our multilingual students and families that need translation and really thinking through how do we make sure those translations, they get out and, know, and, and they don't get out too far behind um, what we're sending out in English. And then finally, understanding that even, even um, our graduating seniors, you know, are going to be disparately impacted, you know, the, the, the impact of their final year being kind of thrown off this way and really thinking, what can we do special for them? And what about our families with multiple students, you know, that, um, that they're juggling between the needs of like three or four or five different grade levels and different teacher expectations. And so we're, we, uh, as a district, we're kind of brainstorming for each of those groups, what we're doing and collecting those. And I hope to have a document that eventually I can share with everyone, you know, uh, and promote kind of exactly what we're doing for each group. Thank you for that. And um, what does equity, what is the equity message for teachers during distance learning? Yeah, so knowing that, that different families and different students are impacted in this time at, at different degrees, we've been sharing some messages with all of our staff and some considerations or kind of a mindset for them to bring into the process of distance learning. And so the first thing we told them is acknowledge the extraordinary. Understand that, you know, this is not a business as usual and being transparent about everyone trying to figure it out. And this is really extraordinary times and we're going to get through it together and kind of that that forgiveness and flexibility of, of how we teach um, and that, that needs to be applied both to our staff and to our students and families. And we've been encouraging everyone to be consistent, you know, like set up some routines, both at home, you know, for teachers to have routines of how they're gonna go about their day. And then within the learning experience, we've been encouraging our teachers to set up some kind of routines of how they deliver the, the lessons and letting, letting students and families know like what they can expect to see online. And then um, finally, really thinking through the workload. I mean, the workload, uh, we can't spend as, uh, six hours a day the way that we would in, in a classroom setting and so in, in person. And so how we need to be flexible about what we're actually going to cover and how much and really focusing on the essentials and really the most important things to learn to get ready for the next school year um, and, and being able to check in and monitor the progress throughout that way. So during this time of distance learning, how can families and students communicate with the teachers? Yeah, so um, it's not always easy to predict like how different families are experiencing, you know, this, this time. And I know for my nephew, you know, just I have two different nephews, one that's super social, you know, and he's like really struggling just because he's just like who he is and his culture and everything it just needs to be around people and he's struggling with that. And the other is like the opposite and he's just thriving in this period, you know, and just like really happy to just be at home in his pajamas and, you know, and, 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 and um, you know, working on his own. And so in order to have that communication, we've established a process that we've tied to attendance. And it's not attendance like we normally would take at school. Really, the purpose of attendance is to provide a daily check-ins um, between uh, teachers and students and families um, in order for them to communicate something about their wellness, like how are, how are they doing, any supports that they might need in order to uh, engage in the learning, and then kind of uh, reminding, the, inviting them to set some goals of what they want to accomplish each day. So um, in our TK through and kindergarten classes, the teachers are actually going to reach out twice a week to each family um, to make that connection. But for grades first through 12, um, each student, uh, students will be logging into their Google Classroom every day. Um, and for each of their teachers in secondary, 
and sending a, a quick message and filling out a form to say, you know, this is how I'm doing. Here's what I'm trying to work on for your class or for school today. Um, and it might be some days that, hey, I can't actually work on anything for your class today because like things are happening, but we want to, and that's, that's fine. That counts as being present. That counts as, as checking in. And we want to have that communication and dialogue and be realistic and flexible. Um, and so even if like, let's say you have three students or three kids at your home in, at home and they all need to check in with their teachers, um, but maybe they can't all be on the computer at the same time, those check-ins should just be like a minute. And, and if you have a cell phone, you can get the Google Classroom app and actually do it really quickly that way too. Um, and just do your quick check-ins, do that by noon. So the, 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 the expectation for students is that they check in by noon, sometime in that morning um, with their teachers. And then if they need to actually do the homework or assignments, they can do that later in the evening uh, or in the afternoon, but at least make sure to do the check-in each day in, uh, in the morning um, so that teachers can read it, ref reflect, and then follow up as needed. And last question, Matt, so what can, families do to support their children during distance learning? Yeah, so, you know, there's, there's a couple of things that we really want um, to encourage people to think about and to reference. And one is to really attend to the students, you know, um, social emotional well-being and attending to their anxieties and their stress levels uh, during this time. And there's actually, we have a great um, family resource site that I know I've heard um, spoken about in, the, in our EGU news, and that, that site both has community resources and, and things out there in our community that are supporting um, families on a wide range of needs, but also a lot of needs, uh, 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 resources specifically for things that you can do with your, with your kids around um, supporting their social emotional health and around learning and around uh, physical wellness and other great tips. And I think that's a great starting point. You know, um, it, when kids are learning like how to cook, when they're learning, uh, you know, or, or writing letters to family members, you know, all of those things are learning still and, and really powerful experiences. And those are things that, that families can definitely do at home. And then if you're interested in any of the work that we're doing in our Office of Educational Equity, we actually have an equity um, a resource site that we have for the entire district that captures a lot of resources as well as um, you know, uh, events and things like that that we're working on. And then you can sign up for a monthly uh, newsletter that where we send out um, updates from our office on things that people can, can do and, and things that we're trying to do in order to address the equity needs in our district. Great, thank you so much, Matt Espinoza, Program Specialist from Elk Grove Unified School District's Department of Educational Equity. Thanks, Cindy. His interview really taught me that we can't make assumptions about people and what they have available to them, and that instead, as a public school district, we need to continue to help remove obstacles that students might be challenged with when it comes to their learning. Mm. Nice interview, and it's a very important insight. Thank you. There are many great resources out there, and there's another new thing that I heard about, which I really love. This is something I've been asking for, and I think a lot of our families and our students will be happy to hear about it. Um, and that has to do with the fact that um, the push notifications have now been turned on for our um, student view and parent view uh, information or the synergy the email system yeah especially in you know the 21st century we're all about those push <laughs> notification on smartphones and as mentioned in our letter sent on April 13th about communication we encourage parents and students to email their teachers and school staff using student view and parent view both are apps available in the app store on your, your smartphone. Now students and parents will see a notification about an email that they receive in the app. And if you don't have the app installed on your handheld device, here's where you can find the download. All right, Cindy, a lot of information today. Let's shift over now to our county and state updates. Cindy? As of today, April 15th, according to the Sacramento County Department of Public Health, the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in Sacramento County is now at 853. Mm, and by age group, the confirmed COVID-19 cases are as follows, 
ages 0 to 17, there are nine. In ages 18 to 49, there are 377. And in ages 50 through 64, there are 207. And then in ages 65 and over, there are 260 confirmed COVID cases. Currently, 32 individuals have now unfortunately died from complications of COVID-19 and were either 65 and over or had underlying health conditions. Last week, the Sacramento County issued a new public health order for all residents to continue to stay home and extended the term of the order to increase social distancing and reducing person-to-person -person contact to further slow transmission of COVID-19. That's right. And also there's a new or there's that mobile testing site that's available to the public. It's at Cal Expo. There's no medical care that's provided at the testing center and the, um, the tests are done by appointment only. And you can register to take a test by visiting projectbaseline.com. Remember, there's walk-ins will not be seen. So speaking about social distancing and the importance of self-hygiene and hygiene in the workplace, um, I heard about a big donation that Elk Grove Unified received. Can you tell us more about that, Sandy? Yeah, it, it's huge. So Elk Grove Unified is thankful for the generosity and support from our community. Earlier this week, we received 1,000 masks from, a, wow. from the group called Face Mask Makers with Love. And these masks will be used by our front office staff at our 67 schools, all of our custodians, and our maintenance and operations team. And um, I don't know if you had a chance to look at them yet, but they're very creative. There's some John Deere colored um, <laughs> printed masks. There's um, different colors that are printed. There's black masks and they're all made by hand. Wow. And it's phenomenal. So if the community would like to donate to this organization, please visit the GoFundMe page that um, the link is provided right below. Excellent. Well, I love their I love their title, the uh, face mask face mask makers with love. Excellent. So we also can't forget that I heard that there was one other of our food vendors who also made a huge donation. So I understand that Tyson Foods has also donated over three thousand masks that will also support our staff. Um, and so we are so thankful. We feel the love from both of these great donations. Um, they're things that are gonna keep our staff safe, our staff healthy, um, and these two organizations are just, they're wonderful. They immediately reached out to us knowing that we are essential workers and that um, there's many of us who are still going into making sure our schools are safe, our schools are clean, um, et cetera, and that things are still running, business is still being conducted. So really great stuff um, and I think it's just awesome that they were able to provide this for us. Definitely. And during these trying times, organizations have adjusted their original plans, including how we deliver um, food and how we um, serve our communities with masks on. So this also includes receptions to honor our exceptional students create that <laughs> created phenomenal projects. So this year's SEBA 2020 awards night celebration has been reimagined as a virtual event, which I think is amazing. And um, they're encouraging all of us to join in and watch the awards ceremony live on Comcast Cable Channel 15 or online at secctv.org. And you may RSVP to receive updates and use the hashtag SEBA awards to post on social media during the award show. So, you know, we have a lot of submissions. We have um, this week, the SEBA awards are announcing finalists in each of the categories um, that begins late afternoon every day. And they could go, um, visitors could go onto their website to um, see the latest finalists that have been announced in each category. So it's a huge event that Elk Grove Unified is part of. We have a lot of SEBA lab studios throughout many of our elementary, middle, and high schools. And they're a huge partner of ours through our um, efforts to continue to you know, provide the best educational experience for our students, whether it's in the classroom or in the distance learning 
as we are right now. That's awesome. And Sandeep, I cannot wait to start working with our students again once they get rolling back with distance learning and help having them help us with our Eager News broadcast. I think yeah. they, they were very creative and did a wonderful job. All of our, and I look forward to working with all of our SEBA labs in the future. So, well, that's awesome. Well, I, the reminders are great. Thank you. And before we end today's episode, we want everyone to remember that we have many resources available um, for our students, our families, um, and the community, and they can all be found on our website. So thank you, and please stay safe and stay healthy. Um, that's it for today's edition of EGU News. Make sure you subscribe to us at the uh, youtube.com slash Elk Grove Unified channel, and I'm Santi Pinkerton. And I'm Sandeep Dusanj. We'll see you next time.